You know what can cause problems? Not being able to go where you need to go. You know, in this concept of not being able to go where you want to go causing problems, well, this is especially true with air conditioning. I mean, when you think about it, what we're trying to do is transfer heat from inside a building to outside a building. Now, if something were to get in the way of that heat transfer, what we would wind up doing is building up heat and building up pressure within the unit until eventually what we're gonna have is a catastrophic failure. This is a very typical barred wall mount unit, a system you might find on telecom shelters, utility shelters, schools, offices, and really buildings all over the world. Specifically today, what we're focusing on here at eye level is the condenser coil. As you know, the condenser coil is what's directly responsible for transferring the heat from inside the building to outside the building. And this is done through a fan force convection process. Now, if anything were to get in the way of that fan force convection process, we would build up heat and pressure within the system, eventually leading to a failure. Now, common obstacles might include insects, dryer lint, dandelion, cottonwood, even feathers. So as a result, these coils need to be inspected and cleaned on a regular basis. In fact, that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna clean this condenser coil. But before we do, we need to take a minute and talk about safety, some of the materials, the methods, and the equipment we're gonna use. When cleaning a condensing coil, the primary tools involved will be liquid condenser coil cleaner, an application sprayer, and a garden hose with a plentiful supply of fresh water. Now really, these are the only non-negotiable items necessary to cleaning a condensing coil. Don't try to use a shop vac by itself. That soft bristle brush may get surface materials off that coil, but it won't do anything for the dirt driven deep inside. On the other hand, don't try to use a pressure washer to force that dirt out. What you'll wind up doing is bending over those soft aluminum fins, further impeding the airflow. Really, the only truly successful method to thoroughly cleaning a condenser coil is with a good liquid condenser coil cleaner. Now, whether it's acid or alkaline based, a good liquid condenser coil cleaner will aggressively attack the softer organic materials that are plugging up that coil. And after a short contact time, you can expect to rinse the residual cleaner and any dissolved solids away very quickly. Make sure you follow the specific directions of the brand you're using. Remember that you too are made out of the same sort of softer organic materials that we're trying to dissolve out of this coil. So think safety. Goggles, or at the very least, a good pair of safety glasses are required to protect your vision. Gloves too are a very necessary item, as are protective clothing and good solid footwear. All of these items are a must, but no tool is more important to your own safety than your own brain. Whenever you're working with dangerous chemicals, use common sense. Be aware of very windy conditions. On the other hand, be aware of underventilated conditions. Remember, these fumes can be very hazardous and be ready at a moment's notice to rinse the area clear. Remember, these chemicals are very aggressive. They can burn your skin, they can kill nearby plants, they can stain concrete, they can discolor asphalt. So that fresh water supply that you have handy is very important. Also, make sure you rinse the unit completely clear. Any residual cleaner left over in that unit will continue to react aggressively with the aluminum, with the copper, and with the steel inside that unit, and will continue to degrade it long after you've left. So make sure you rinse that unit clear. And since we're using running water, before we do anything, we have to make sure that we shut down all electrical supply to the unit before we begin.
Okay, with the power off, we can take a closer look at this condenser coil. And at first glance, this condenser coil appears very clean. However, looks can be deceiving. Barred wall mount units often will operate differently than other air conditioners. Most air conditioners will pull their condenser air through the front of the condenser coil and eject it out of the top of the unit. Barred wall mount units, on the other hand, often will pull their condenser air from the sides and eject it out the front. So this coil becomes a push through instead of a pull through. So any dirt or debris that may gather on the face of this coil gets blown off very quickly. As a result, a plugged or a dirty condenser coil is often misdiagnosed by the technician because they cannot see any dirt or debris on the front of the coil. You see, the real story lies behind the coil, where the fan may drive dirt or debris deep into this coil. Other symptoms you could look for would be high refrigerant pressures, a very high temperature rise across this coil, or condenser air trying to exit where it normally enters. The only true way to visually assess or clean this condenser coil is by removing the side panels and accessing the coil that way. With the side panels off, we can now loosen the condenser fan motor shroud from the chassis, unwire the condenser fan motor from the control panel, and then remove the whole fan and motor assembly and shroud for ease of access and a super thorough coil cleaning. With the condenser fan motor, fan blade, and shroud assembly removed, we now have full access to the condenser coil. Realize, however, as you're visually assessing the condition of this coil, this coil removes the vast majority of its heat through the edges of the coil, not the center. The center may appear perfectly clean, but it's the edges of the coil that you want to clean the most.
Before reassembly, take some time with a small straight bladed screwdriver or a fin comb to straighten damaged sections of the coil. Now that our condenser coil is clean, the unit has been reassembled, we've reapplied power, we are ready to assess the performance of our newly cleaned condenser coil. And we're going to do this by initiating a cooling call at the thermostat or the lead lag controller. And while the system is running, what we're going to look for is a temperature rise across this outdoor coil. On average, a barred wall mount unit will produce between 20 and 30 degrees of temperature rise from the outdoor air ambient conditions entering the side grills to what exits this coil. Now if you are still seeing 40 degrees, 50 degrees, 60 degrees, or even 70 degrees of temperature rise exiting this coil, you still have an airflow problem. You may have to clean this coil a second time, a third time, or even a fourth time to completely rid the coil of any obstacles driven deep inside. Alternatively, you may look at some other items, like condenser fan blade spacing. And if that's the case, you're going to want to reference the installation manual specific to the model that you're working on. Otherwise, it could also be a weak condenser fan motor capacitor, a faulty condenser fan motor, a damaged condenser fan blade. Any of these items would have significant performance effects upon this coil. Now in the future, we will have videos referencing each of these exact items. But until then, I hope this video has been beneficial to you as a technician. And on behalf of Bard Manufacturing, my name is Glenn Bowen. Stay cool.